know we had a good time. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, like they said, call us back, it's hot line. <laughs> Located right across the street from the beautiful Shanghai Shindig Winter Gardens, it's the award-winning Talk Soup. Greg Kinnear back with you, checking out highlights of the talk shows one more time, and then I think we're done, right? This is it, the final show. Looks like we got the president coming up in a few moments here on the show. He saw a State of the Union address last night. He said that we all need health care, and surprisingly, we all need to watch Talk Soup six or seven times a day. What was that all about? You just wouldn't think that a president would... Now, coming up a little bit later on, it's the great scarf sniff-off. A daughter who thinks her vain mom looks a little bit like Beetlejuice and the fascinating world of food regurgitation is coming your way as well so sure you could flip over to the weather channel but why <sighs> first up let's enter the mind of a psychic if not psychotic hotline addict her name is marjorie and she was a guest on tuesday's jerry springer show as you might guess this is somewhat of a costly obsession this woman has here an average call costs what are you looking at four Five bucks? Five bucks per minute. And believe you me, Marjorie has racked up hours and hours and hours worth of calls. What is it about these hotlines that makes you want to call and call and call? This is worse. They tell me what I don't want to hear. They insult me at the kazoo. I, you and know I'm, what? I'm there arguing with them, you know? What do they say to you? They tell me not to call a psychic hotline for one thing, get a psychiatrist, I'll give you another number you'll call for an analyst. You for know. $4 a minute, they're for telling you, I'll minute. insult you for two bucks a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's cheaper. Okay. I spent all of, I, I called them because I was having constant nightmares, such nightmares about my Aunt Mary, my Aunt Madeline, my Aunt Clara in Jersey City. You know, and I was being, going through an autopsy in this, uh, horrible. And night and day for a month. Would you go and see a doctor? I did. They said, call a psychic hotline. <laughs> yes, indeed. The doctor dressed in a bizarre skull and crossbones headdress complete with chicken blood war paint makeup recommended she, what was it, the LaToya? LaToya Jackson hotline? Call a psychic hotline. Get out of here. Marjorie's also addicted to tarot cards, as it turns out. And later on the show, one of Jerry's guests apparently dialed one of these psychic hotlines, and this little bit of television hilarity took place. Hi, I'm looking for psychic advice. Oh, honey, I'm waiting for a call from the Jerry Springer Show. Can you call back about yeah, this? Yeah, this is the Jerry Springer this is Show. Oh, hi, Bonnie. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> hi, Bonnie, this is Jerry Springer. We're on the show right now. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, and thanks for clearing your lines for me. I kind of feel pretty important. Uh, how, you know what, if you're a psychic, how, didn't, how come you didn't know this was the Jerry Springer Show? <laughs> That's the Jerry Springer Show highlight coming up Friday. He'll be talking to Kenny and a number of other men who are disabled but live in large. That'll be Friday. Stories of courage. Oh, that is fantastic. That's just fantastic. <laughs> Donald and his twin brother, Ronald, I guess. Very close. They, they are very close. So close that Donald actually posed as a helicopter pilot in Korea when Ronald decided to go AWOL. So close that Donald has served time in jail for his brother on three different occasions. So close that Montel Williams wanted to find out why Ronald feels so indebted to his seemingly evil twin. This story may shed some light on things. Take a look. I guess that you and your brother used to switch and trick people all the time when you were younger? We switch in classes. We switch on jobs, jobs that he didn't want, I'd go get it. Okay. Uh, women, we play games on them. <laughs> a lot of times? Virtually a lot. I mean, this, this, uh, yeah, you didn't switch like, I mean, uh, I heard the story about a couple of uh, twin males who, one was, took a lady home and then got him and said, I want to go get something to eat. Right. And walked out, changed clothes, and the other twin, you, did you do that? Well, what happened was, he, he was be making love to a woman and he would get up to go to the bathroom, and then I would go in there. <laughs> no, I don't. 
do we have to show little moments like that? Well, I guess we do. That's right. Donald's brother Ronald is serving a 14-year sentence in a maximum security prison in Ventura County here in California. Apparently, they have no plans to swap places in the near future. On Friday, show Montel learns about people who were used as guinea pigs in government experiments. You've been hearing about these stories. You'll meet one man who was deliberately exposed to not uranium, but plutonium. Actor Burt Reynolds certainly had his ups and downs and a pretty impressive career. At one point, he was Hollywood's top box office draw, his star Wayne for a couple of years, and he bounced back on a big TV show called Evening Shade. Recently, Burt has been riding out the shock waves of a highly, highly public split with Lonnie Anderson. Tuesday, when he dropped by, I guess, CBS this morning, Harry Smith started asking him about his recent comments that he's made with regard to the divorce. Take a look at this. You know what? We are happy for you that this chapter in your life seems to be coming to a You know what's the, the strangest thing is that the people you fly over when you fly from L.A. to New York, no offense, uh, that is America. And I've, I've been out traveling around the country because I had to, <laughs> to make money on the weekend, <laughs> pay for the lawyers. I've been opening supermarkets and drugstores and things. Whatever it Mowing takes. lawns. Yeah. Doing parades. Uh, and I've had more people uh, come up to me and say, we're praying for you and, and all that. And, and they don't know how sustaining that was, how wonderful that was for me. And, mm. and you know, Quaker State dropped me because we all know that divorced people don't use oil. And, uh, and, and then the Florida orange juice people drop me because divorced people don't drink orange juice. I think that's a reasonable uh, 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 And I guess if you, if you need a Bryant, gay people don't drink orange juice. I don't know. <laughs> Burt Reynolds on CBS This Morning. The dust is still settling from Burt and Lonnie's divorce. So far, she has been awarded $2 million in cash as well as a half million dollar summer home up in North Carolina. Bob, tell them what else she won. Why, in addition to the vacation house and the money, Lonnie will also receive this deluxe Sissel compact clothes dryer, capable of drying up to 45 pounds of Lonnie's dirty laundry. And if she settles now, she'll have her carpets cleaned by daily by Stan of DuraClean. DuraClean, a fine carpet company. Total price package worth $2.6 million, Greg. Wow. Later on, Bert had this to say about one of Harry's inquiries. Do you have any regrets about the public way in which all of this was played out? That is the dumbest question I've ever heard of. That is not the dumbest of question. Course. Friday on CBS This Morning, get to know some of the athletes competing in the 1994 Winter Olympics. Jocks on Ice, Friday. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, you're so vain, you probably think this show is about you. Plus, sometimes staying married is the best revenge. He says that he can't love me the way he should be able to love me because I, you know, throw fists and throw things, break things. And he said it doesn't let him love me. So he lets me know that. He tells me. Like a half hour vacation from your common sense, it's Talk Soup. We're back. A few more clips for you here. Big party last night. The whole crew, everybody from E got together. I wasn't invited. Yes, you were. Well, I was not invited. Yes, I heard nothing about this, Tom. It's fine. It's fine. Whatever. You know, cut me out. No problem. Patty didn't score a lot of sympathy points when she went on the Ricky Lake show to talk about her stormy marriage while complaining about her husband, Rex. She managed to incriminate herself on a number of counts, as you're going to see right now in this next highlight. Of course, if, if you can overlook the fact that she's a crank, violent, unpredictable, irrational, moody, lazy individual, she's a real charmer. It sounds to me like you like this, this conflict and this fighting in the marriage. Well, at least we're talking to each other. I don't know. So how many kids do you have? With him, I have two. And I have an older son from a previous marriage. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the other things that he does now that you're married? You've been married for five, five years. years. 
So what are some of the other things that he does to, to make you mad and to make you hate him? Well, he's just irritating. He thinks he knows everything and it's just his way or no way. And he's, um, I don't know, I think it's just more that I do more for him than he does for me. You know, he, he says that he can't love me the way he should be able to love me because I, you know, throw fits and throw things, break things. And he said it doesn't let him love me. So he lets me know that. He tells me, you know. The audience just said, yeah, you just said, why, why are you still together? Well, because if we were to get a divorce, um, I would probably have to get a job, and I don't want to work. I want... I want... <laughs> no. 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 There's I... a lot worse things that could happen to you besides getting a job. Hey, that's true. There are worse things that could happen. Here's a couple of possibilities. She could get a paper cut, cash in her next monthly alimony check. Heck, she, she could run out of furniture to break during her next hissy fit. She could be making inane comments on national television. You see, there's a whole slew of things that could be worse. Friday, Ricky meets men and women who can't seem to get over the tragic loss of past loved ones. She'll also hear from the people these folks are currently dating. Well, Tuesday night, President Clinton made his first State of the Union address in anticipation of Clinton's comments. Impression is Jim Morris granted this press conference with Good Morning America's Charlie Gibson. One of the topics that leapt to mind was a recent encounter with Russian leader Boris Yeltsin. Take a look. Were you pleased with your meeting with Mr. Yeltsin? I certainly was. Well, you know, we had a good time. Oh, boy. <laughs> now, <laughs> I'll tell you something. I don't want to say there's a problem there with Mr. Yeltsin, but the next time we meet, I want that olive concession. I'll tell you that. You know, they say that was like a smear campaign, but he's really not a big drinker. I'd say it's more like a smearing off campaign. If you ask me. I think he's a fine fellow, though. Uh, yeah, you finally got yourself a defense secretary. Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, William Perry, I, I wanted a strong defense, and I figured, well, he wasn't getting much playing time in Chicago, and I said, if you can lose 40 pounds, you can come work for me, Mr. <laughs> Refrigerator You. Uh, actually, it was a different I, Perry, though. You know, I'll tell you, know you I'm just joking. My first choice was John Wayne Bobbitt. <laughs> for three reasons. Oh, no. For three reasons, Charlie. Yeah. Well, One, he has had experience with women in combat. Two, he knows that we can survive drastic cuts. And three, and three, he won't be having any nanny problems, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Jim Morris doing his uh, best Bill Clinton there. He also mimics Ronald Reagan, George Bush, and a number of other political figures. I guess Friday on Good Morning America, the godfather of soul, Mr. James Brown, will be talking, squealing, perhaps even grunting about his new album, Universal James. That'll be Friday. We'll take a quick break and be back in a moment with advice for the soon-to-be-divorced. Plus, sniff me like you know me. This weekend on E. Yes, indeed, the topic was couples on the brink of divorce. The program was the Maury Povich Show. Things got very interesting when one of Maury's audience members stood up and started passing out a little free advice to everybody who showed up that day and in the process managed to reveal that his own 29-year marriage could be on somewhat turbulent ground. Yeah, I was, I'm thinking about this other couple right here. How could this guy right here say, I mean, how could you hear your kid tell you who's going to tuck me in, who's going to wake me up? I got five kids. I'm married 29 years. There's times I want to leave. Times I want to kill her. Times we both want to do this to each other. But I wouldn't leave. I'm there for my kids. Once my kids are out, like this other couple, then you make your move. You got a little kid like this. You got... So in other words, you will not mind that Rose is leaving. Well, hey, the kids are out. The kids are out. She right. could not do what they want. I feel around. sorry for that guy, but too. when the kids are home? Oh, when the kids are home, stay there. There's times I want to leave. There's times I want to... Is, is, you know this woman? Yeah. <laughs> huh? Yep, huh? that's it. I'm the other half. Right. But I, Are I, you I, worried I, that once the kids leave, he's going to be out of there? No, I think I'll probably be out first. <laughs> Highlight of the Maury Povich show. Interesting young man in the audience there. I guess up on stage, right? <laughs> Later on, a counselor said it's important for couples to communicate and try and work 
work things out. This Friday on Maury's show, learn about the latest breakthroughs in in vitro conception. It's test tube babies on parade Friday. Was the romance evaporated in your marriage? Is your spouse going to see it? Is he or she grouchy, listless, and unresponsive? Why am I asking all these questions? Please don't get upset. It's a little bit of a lead into this highlight from the Bertice Berry Show. You're about to meet three couples who I guess are all trying to put the fire back into their marriages. Exercise number one, can he recognize her favorite perfume? It's either this, uh -huh. this one, <laughs> you know, you know, or this, this poor guy one. is like, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. <laughs> Please stop, let me make what I enjoy. Color, we're going to go by color. Uh, I think it was maroon one. Maroon. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Now let's see. Something going on. Okay, here we've got the... Black one. <laughs> this feels great, even if you don't guess the color, the uh, perfume. This is the maroon, <laughs> and then we've got the red one. Poor Kevin. <laughs> the maroon. The maroon. <laughs> the maroon. Now, you know what? The maroon is Desiree. You're right, but I guess you all figured if one of you picked it, you wouldn't be wrong. So, red is Cammy. Cammy was the red. And and the other one, Tina. Yeah. Yeah. And so you guys your... really could you ju you just couldn't tell? No, I couldn't. I, I, I too mad. I didn't really get the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it smells like it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a little lady. <laughs> Later on, apparently the women had to see if they could recognize the knees of the men. They love, and that went something like this. Hit it, boys! Oh! Look, it's pictures of knees, and they had to guess which knee was which man. What all this has to do with romance, I don't know. Friday, Bertice meets people who say their mom acts like a child. Mom, why don't you just grow up? Friday. Well, with the Super Bowl rematch between the Dallas Cowboys and the Buffalo Bills just days away, some are betting on the Bills to choke for the fourth year in a row. I know our own Tom McNamara is. Tuesday night, Jay Leno gave his audience a pop quiz regarding the biggest sporting event of the year. Take a look. Put together a little football quiz like the, what I call a, call it a, a chalk and talk. Now pay attention, you might learn a little something about this great sport. For example, a player is most likely to suffer serious injury, A... On the defensive line, B, in the backfield, C, standing between John Madden and the dessert cart. Right. Right. Let's settle down. The most dangerous infraction to football is holding, B, clipping, C, humming show tunes in the huddle. All right, Buffalo coach Marv Levy is spending this week, A, figuring out how to stop Emmett Smith, B, perfecting the five-yard screen pass from Jim Kelly to Thurman Thomas, C, writing his concession speech. No, 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 stop. stop. All right, listen up. All right, players dump Gatorade on the coach, A, to celebrate victory, B, to get back in for hard feelings. See, because it's better than drinking it. Let's be honest. Come on. Come on. The Super Bowl match between Dallas and the Buffalo Bills will be played this Sunday in Atlanta. Dallas is favored by ten and a half points. Friday, Jay talks to John LaRoquette about his TV series cleverly titled The John LaRoquette Show. Very funny program. Friday, tonight's show. Shave room for one more highlight after this break. You're going to meet a husband who is so cheap that I don't really have a description of how cheap he is. Next. I got it. I'll tell them what they want. Ron considers himself frugal, parsimonious, perhaps even a bit miserly, but not cheap. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Not cheap. He, he only snags those ketchup packets from McDonald's because he's trying to economize. In fact, when it comes to making excuses for his stingy behavior, he's downright generous, as Sally Jesse Raphael found out. Take a look at this highlight. And you eat what's left on the kids' plates. Oh, yeah, I don't... One in... time, we were eating dinner, and the kids were scraping off the plates, and my daughter happened to be scraping off the plate, and she said, Dad, you didn't eat that piece of meat that was on my plate, did you? 
and she had ate that piece of meat and spit it out because it was tough, and he ate it. <laughs> oh, geez, that was an accident. I that was an accident. How but, can you tell? <laughs> but most tell. of the time, if, if, there's, if there's food left over in the plate, instead of going in the garbage, I'll um, But he has done that, too. It. He I'll has gotten things out of the garbage. If the kids oh. have thrown away a hamburger or something and thrown it in the garbage, no. he will get it out of the garbage. That was pizza. We went and had this great big pizza. <laughs> oh, it was pizza, excuse me. And I had one piece and went back, and the kids had about five pieces on their plate and went in the living room and watched TV, and I go back to get another piece, and it's all gone. Yeah, where'd it all go? So I uh, go to throw my crust away in the gar garbage underneath the sink, and there it all was. So... Um, I mean, this ain't the dumpster out in the alley. This is just a little paper sack underneath the sink. With so all I the just, other garbage thrown in. So well. I just pulled about the top three pieces off. Anybody and else it. going? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Later on, Ron's wife June put on a little fashion show at her husband's expense. I'll tell you, my husband is so cheap that he doesn't think these pants are worn out. <laughs> On Friday's show, Sally hears from parents who are upset that their daughters are getting divorced. We've titled it, Daughter's Divorce is Ruining My Life. That'll be Friday. Thanks for joining us. That's going to do it for this Talk Soup edition. I'm Greg Kinnear. We'll be back, I guess, tomorrow. Do it again. See you then. Y&R, b and &B, AMC, GH, if this means anything at all to you, and I know it does, then you'll want to stick around and watch Pure Soap, packed with highlights from all of your favorite shows. It's coming up next. Could you pass the Twinkie, please?